Hello everyone, welcome to today's vlog and thank you for watching this vlog and sharing in the worship in this way through our Fenny Church's YouTube channel. And if I could ask you uh, today, please, uh, to do uh, something. I know that many of you have been helping um, some people uh, who might have struggled otherwise to uh, access these vlogs, to view them. And I thank you very much for doing that. If you can continue to do that, if you know of anyone who doesn't yet uh, view the vlogs, uh, but who perhaps has the technology to do it, but isn't familiar enough with it to be able to uh, to, to get onto the vlogs themselves. If you could uh, help anybody to do that, that would be uh, great because that would spread this worship around even more. And then if those people could then help other people to access them and we spread this worship in community around and keep this time of continuity until we're able to physically meet again. Uh, so if you are able to do that, I would be uh, really grateful. Thank you. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song, Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings. Here, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, 
Suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, my beloved, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus, himself alone. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In these last few days, we've been uh, thinking about um, <clears throat> St George's Day. Um, <clears throat> and when we think about St George's Day, um, some people have um, ideas of uh, the story which we all know about St George uh, killing the dragon and rescuing the damsel. So we have uh, kind of pictures of swords and shields and thinking of a knight on sh in shining armour on horseback, um, bravely rescuing uh, the innocent damsel from the ferocious and terrible dragon. Well, that's one way of looking at St George. And another uh, approach has been to try and uh, locate some Roman general um, in uh, some part of the, the Roman world. And that's all been mixed up with Arthurian myth and legend. And they're mixed up with stories from the Crusades. But I want to share with you a story about for St George's Tide uh, that's nothing to do with any of those things. Uh, and what it is to do with is this place. This is called Hatfield St George Church in Cambridge. Hatley St George Church in Cambridgeshire. And the church, sadly, like all the churches at the moment, is locked up. But nevertheless, it's been standing there since the 14th century, the 1300s, and has stood as a, a testament to faithfulness and God's promises to us, uh, and has withstood all kinds of things, um, some of which were much worse than the present situation we find ourselves in now, and has stood there as a testament to the uh, power and the faith that people have in God. And one of the phrases we use is uh, deliver us from the changes and chances of this fleeting world. And this ch church has been standing there through many fleeting changes and chances and circumstances in the world. And when we think of it's dedicated to St George, and when we think of St George, we think of uh, English patriotism. Um, but the, the patriotism that I uh, warm to has nothing to do with um, flag waving or wrapping political causes in in a particular time in the in the national uh, flag uh, or even stories of armies sweeping around the world. It's actually for me to do with places like this, little particularities of England hidden away very often, uh, little. Uh, parishes and places and little churches um, that have been there for a long time and have, bore, that have been part of people's lives and have bore witness to many things. And places like um, Blackburn, our own town, uh, which until very recently was part of a very important world economy, and we can see reflections of that in particular places and stories of people, not least in our own two churches, their association with the Field and family, very prominent Blackburn uh, family and prominent in, in the cotton trade. If a patriotism that I warm to is to do, has more to do with uh, the little particularities, little special places often hidden away, stories of people hidden away. If this church was dedicated to St George and has been there since the 14th century, it suffered in the 1960s the apparent misfortune of the collapse of its um, chancel and choir which came out here so that really all that stood now is what was the nave. 
and the church couldn't afford to rebuild the uh, the choir and the chancel and the sanctuary. But the architect had a stroke of brilliance in my eyes in that they put this large clear window in the what the rebuilt west wall and through this window is the view of the most magnificent beech tree because this is the view from the inside of the church and you can see that through the window you can see the beech tree so that the worshippers can see throughout the year the changes uh, in the seasons as reflected in that beech tree so they're looking through the wall they're looking through the window to the changing times and seasons just as whenever we worship at the altar we are also in a sense looking through what's there to the glory and the splendor of God which um, the altar speaks of and reflects back to us it's it's looking through the window to the tree just as we're looking through the sacraments to the glory of God and in this uh, church which like many other churches is uh, struggling to maintain its upkeep and struggling to maintain its, its presence uh, every year uh, there a fate is held to um, to try and raise funds to for the upkeep of the church and during this fate a poem is read out and this poem uh, stands all year round in the porch of the church of Hatfield St George and I'm going to read the poem to you because it speaks very clearly of a, a presence uh, an enduring presence throughout all the different changes of the world reflected in the beech tree but also I think reflected as you'll see in the church itself this is called Hatley St George. Stand here a while and drink the silence in, where clear glass lets in living light to touch and bless your eyes. A beech tree's tender green shimmers beyond the window's lucid arch. You look across an absent sanctuary, no walls or roof, just holy open space leading your gaze out to the fresh-leaved beech God planted here before you first drew breath. Stand here a while and drink the silence in. You cannot stand as long and still as these, this ancient beech tree and still more ancient church. So let them stand as they have stood for you. Let them disclose their gifts of time and place a secret kept for you through all these years. Open your eyes. This empty church is full, thronging with life and light your eyes have missed. Stand here a while and drink the silence in. Shields of forgotten chivalry and rolls of honour for the young men gunned down at Ypres and other monuments of our brief lives stand for the presence here of saints and souls who stood where you stand to be blessed like you. Clouds of witnesses to unclouded light shining this moment in this place for you. Stand here a while and drink their silence in. Annealed in glass, the twelve apostles stand and each of them is keeping faith for you. The roof is held aloft to give you space by graceful angels praying night and day that you might hear some rumour of their flight, that you might feel the flicker of a wing and let your heart fly free at last in prayer.
So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we know that wherever two or three meet, however, in your name, you will be with us. In confidence, then, we bring our cares and our needs to you. And so we pray that your love will spill out through your church to all the world, filling all teaching, all advice and counsel, all authority and correction with the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may your spirit of forgiveness and justice permeate the social and political fabric of our world so we are able to rule wisely, discuss differences calmly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may your light shine in our hearts, showing us our faults and weaknesses, enabling us to bring them to you and to shine through our lives in the way we treat each other, the way we reach out to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, may your comfort and consolation soothe those who are afraid or in great pain. Refresh all who are mentally or physically exhausted and be a lifeline to all those who are broken hearted or in despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit at this time, especially all those who are suffering through the COVID-19 virus. Lord, we pray for all who are ill and all who care for them, that they may find your presence with them, your Holy Spirit, encouraging them and building them up, filling them with your wholeness and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that those who have passed now into eternity be welcomed in your heavenly kingdom to live with you forever. And so we praise you, Lord, for all the joy and gladness of our lives, for the beauty of your world, the affection of our loved ones. As we say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing in this worship, wherever you are. And uh, please do remember, if you can, if you're able to, uh, to help those who may not be able to um, view the uh, the vlogs themselves, but may actually have the means to do that uh, with, with just a little bit of help. If you could do that, that will spread this worshipping community even further. So until tomorrow, take care and keep safe and God bless.